more love, more joy, everything. It's inspired young people. Inspiration comes from within you. When you clear out the garbage that's in your mind, you then create space for something better, more beautiful to come in. Let's have life and have it more abundantly. I say yes. It's like taking a workshop. I get to be in my pajamas. We have a very active imagination, which is why it's important to learn how to harness it and then point it in the direction you want to go. I listen to your show every day. It's time now for Living Your Inspired Life with Susan Burrell. Susan is no-nonsense, inspirational, motivational, and fun. This is positive talk radio. Practical wisdom for everyday life. It's a gift you give yourself. Now, here's Susan. And welcome to Living Your Inspired Life. You're listening to News Talk 1590 KVTA, and at at the beginning of every show, I just invite everyone to go to the website, livingyourinspiredlife.org, where you can listen in on all the amazing conversations we've had over the year. And because we're coming into the holiday season, I would suggest that you take extra time for yourself to just listen in to uh, whichever show calls you so that you can kind of get fed while you're amping up and running through well maybe it's just me running through the holiday season but (laughs) so go to livingyourinspiredlife.org where you can tune in tune up and develop your power perspective so with that said um today i have a, a a woman who is a new friend but when we met, we we recognized each other. And so I said, you, we've got to talk. And we've got to talk on air on Living Your Inspired Life because I want to share with everyone that's listening what it is that this this individual does. So I want to welcome Susan Lustenberger. Susan, thanks for joining me. Oh, my gosh. I am so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So And so it's interesting because we're both Susans. Gr- having grown up in <laughs> a plethora, a, <laughs> a plethora of Susan, so we'll see how the the how the how it goes today when we're saying Susan, 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 Susan. <laughs> <laughs> so you are about to launch a new program, which we're going to dive into in, in a few minutes. Uh, that definitely caught my attention, but I want you to share with everybody what it is you actually do in life and the business that you currently have. Okay, well. So I was born clairvoyant, so I am by birth a medium, so I'm a clairvoyant, and I I started and hung my shingle as a psychic medium, and then through helping people and through doing reading, I started working with people on abundant management or prosperity planning, and I do a lot of manifesting work with people. I go into companies, I go into individuals, and... What I was finding is actually they would come to me and I would do a reading and I would see these phenomenal lives and they would just look at me and go, what? How? Like, didn't know how. They couldn't see it. They thought it was, you know, their dreams, their ideal life. They did really, people really struggle with the grasp that it's totally achievable to have everything you want. So let me ask you a question about that because I'm raising my hand, which I do a lot when it's all about me. (laughs) <laughs> so, uh, because I get, I am one of those people and I, I, I work with, I have clients and I help them get their thing, right? Manifest mm-hmm. their life. For sure. But there are many of us out in the world that are doing, you know, nose to the grindstone, amazing work. And yet the, the money, you know, show me the money thing is, is minimal, for people, so right. can we can we kind of drill down on that for a moment of yeah. how how you help people do that? And here's really the gist of it: is we come in, we get our vibration, and, and there's David Hawkins who does Power versus Force. He wrote the book, and we all vibrate, and we we get our vibration by the time we're seven. And if we if there is any limiting belief in our house vibrationally, we took that on. We that became part of our energy system that we might, we might not even know about. And then at seven, you start recreating those. So what happens is you could be, really quite frankly, you could be working your, your fanny off, and if you have some limiting beliefs about what money you're supposed to have mm-hmm. or that it might be for other people but not you, you are absolutely consciously willing to accept less than what you should be making. Or, you know, you don't, you don't, see your life as big as it can actually be. And those are the things that I find people 
when they get really clear on, they actually are able to break their glass ceiling, whether it's they're an entrepreneur and start having worse of their self. I have a client that actually we were just talking the other day, and she yet one more week had given away her hour. She had given her hourly rate in for free for the project. And that just is a self-worth issue is mm-hmm. what that is. And when you vibrate at giving things away for free, that's all you actually will be still creating, you know, because what we think we create, what we dream. And every day, you know, Susan, I tell people all the time, they come to me and say, I can't manifest. And it's like, here's the thing, we're manifesting from the second we wake up in the morning because it's what we think about we're creating. We just, as a society, manifest lack and stress. Oh, yeah. We manifest not having enough money. We manifest not making enough money. And if we were to take the energy that we unconsciously do those manifestations with and just put in a little, even 50% towards our dreams, we would blow it out of the park in, within one year. And that's why I created this. And, you know, um, people really, they, money is tricky. It's got such importance to us. And if we were just for 30 days become bored, bored of the whole thing, like really became interested in gardening or something just for a 30 day project, money would start flowing to us because we weren't at least holding up the wall of it's hard or, you know, you have to work hard to make money. If you're a spiritual person, you should absolutely not be a wealthy person. That's one of the biggest. And if you're doing anything good for the world, you know, you're a charlatan if you're taking money for it. Oh, those are huge belief systems. Yeah. Yeah, And money is just that. It's just energy. So what I'm hearing you say, Susan, is that when we're able to uh, take our attention off of the thing we think we're not getting, it will start to come in. It will. And here's the the thing. And I know you know this, but what we resist persists. So Mm -hmm. if we just are constantly thinking about we're not making enough money, well, the universe does not judge. It just matches. So it's going to just give us more of that to think about. And it's when, and you really do. Like, I, you know that old saying, fake it till you make it. Now, there's a good fake it till you make it, and there's a bad fake it till you make it. And it depends on your consciousness around that. But I'm a huge proponent of vision, of vision boards. And I do a little ritual every day and sit in front of mine with intention. And I absolutely impress the feeling of having everything on that vision board already. And that brings it to me at the speed of light. I mean, like, I can't even believe it. And because of my intuitive background, I see signs. And that's really what I, you know, there's there's the four pillars of prosperity are mental, it's emotional, it's spiritual, and it's physical. And one of my strong suits is that I really do bring the emotional and the spiritual to it. You know, there's there's people like John Astraff, who's amazing at the mental. I mean, amazing. Mm-hmm. And he's amazing at the physical. And there's people like um, I'm trying, Mike Dooley, who's really good at the emotional side of manifesting. And, you know, we don't expect magic anymore in our life. And my favorite word in the entire English language is wonderful. And it's because what it means is to be full of wonder. And when we sit in full of wonder, we manifest like crazy people. We manifest the good. So, so Susan, let's back up just a, a little bit more for the listeners who may not know what a vision board is, because that's mm-hmm. it is a it is a cool uh, component for for people, especially people that are visual. Some people just can do it with affirmations. Yes. But there are so many people that are highly creative and don't know it, and they need to see a visual cue. So t- share with people what a vision board is. I can't imagine that people don't know that by now, but if you could say something about it. So a vision board is a huge, either either a cork board or it's a piece of cardboard that you made, and you take all the things you want in life, or like mine is very symbolic of what I want, and... You tack it up or you tape it or glue it up. And then my favorite thing to do, so say you want a a new car. You put that car up on the vision board. Say you want, you know, you want to fall in love. You put that, you put an ideal symbol of who that person you want to fall in love is 
is. And then, you know, kids, like whatever is big for you, you put images from magazines, good Lord, from Pinterest, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, we're, we live in a world of, of, um, of creativity and you put those up on a board. And then what I love to do is I love to put words next to the images on your vision board. And here is why. When you, let's just say you put, let's say you have a big pile of money up on your vision board. And that is, by the way, totally acceptable to put on a vision board. And if anybody judges you for that, they're being silly. And next to it, you put the word success or you put the word money. And you look at that vision board every day and you see the see money, you feel what you what your dream life would be when you feel that money and you see the word success. So then what happens is a week later you're at the doctor and you've been doing your daily vision board routine. And there is a magazine on the coffee table and it's about success. Well what your eyes see is a magazine with the word success. What your subconscious sees is a pile of money and what you immediately subconsciously feel is what it feels like to have that. So that's manifesting. Even the though the stack of money big. isn't isn't actually in your bank account yet. No, it, it, <clears throat> the vital part of manifesting really, truly, the game of it, the playing of it. And what I do is I teach people that come to me, there's a million things to do, subtle, slight to really big things, to play the game of having prosperity and abundance so then you are vibrating at that. You're tricking your ego. You're tricking any non-belief system. And and the universe is picking up on that vibration. So, you know, I, I, I got to say, because I've been practicing uh, these kinds of principles for over 20 years now. Mm-hmm. And I still, my mind still plays games with me. It still trips me up where I'll I'll like say uh, uh, imagining a pile of money and my mind will go oh yeah but you can't she can he can but you mm-hmm. can't and it's still I, I I catch myself often where that that uh mental mind I, I use other words mm-hmm. that I can't say oh, on I air love that. but That's awesome. yes, <laughs> but where that mental mind, mind continues to do a tripwire with me and I have to catch myself and I can go down the road for a while you know days or weeks or whatever not even realizing that I've tripped that wire again that t- has uh, brought me into that disbelief mm-hmm. of the of the manifesting the thing that I say I want I, no, I, I, I don't know if that happens to everybody, but it certainly does happen to me. And this is the stuff that I practice and live my life from, and, and I get caught. Of course, it of course it happens to everybody. And here's, I mean, because here's the thing: like when I, you know, we all have we all have situations that are ideal come at us. It's because we're human, right? And we have say we have a client that doesn't pay, or a client that you know whatever that that is, and we start to go this is hard. I, you know, I don't want to be a bill collector or, you know, it just seems like the money's flowing out faster than it can come in. Right. You have to, what it is, is it's pulling yourself right back into your practice immediately and saying either, I have two things that are my all time favorite, either delete. And I mean, there have been days because it's an emotional thing or like, say you're, say you're upset at somebody that, you know, I mean, when you have teenagers and they're just spending money wildly, very, very difficult to not get in that vibration of, holy moly, this money's just flying out of here. And I have found myself literally walking through the house constantly, delete, 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 delete. Mm-hmm. Or my really favorite is delete, the story, and uncreate that. And what Wait, that say is, that again. Delete the story delete, and uncreate lack. And uncreate all that, all that. Oh. And so here's what this means. Delete is you're immediately doing what delete, delete does, and you are absolutely like tripping up your neural neural pathways that give you the limiting belief. You're confusing your neural pathways when you say that. And then you say, um, the story. And that energetically, because, you know, those of us who work with a lot of energy, that energetically, you're pulling the story out of where you bought off on that belief. Mm-hmm. And then when you say uncreate, you're actually uncreating the vibration in your energy field. 
So let's talk a little bit about that too, uh, because I don't know that people really get that having an inflow of abundance, whether it's money or love or Mm -hmm. whatever, is an energetic interaction that has to occur. So let's talk about that. And that's all it is. And here's what it is, is when our energy, so Power Versus Force by David Hawkins has a has a chart and it says we vibrate anywhere from 200 which is right above death to a thousand which is total of enlightenment and where we hold our vibration is also through our emotions right and it's if we're happy that's why people that say oh you know it 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 doesn't matter if you're happy or, or depressed about the abundance you pull in but it most definitely does because you are no longer at lack And you are no longer, and it's a subtle, like, here, let me explain something to you. Somebody walks in a room. You don't, you've never seen them. You don't know them, but you are so wildly attracted to them, not even romantically, but they just are effervescent. They have an energy that you want to get to know, or that's one energy, or someone walks in a room and immediately you want no part of them. You want to stay away. That is our energy, and we all excel it. We all have an energy, and they either, like you and I, when we met, our energies collided, and we were like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> and But it, it, I love people to play with it, is that they can walk in a grocery store and see if they're matching frequencies with other people. Or another student, another perfect example, is how one day you'll turn on your radio, and the song will come on, and you'll be singing and dancing, and you'll love it. And three days later, you get in your car, and you turn it on, and it's annoying, and you turn it right off, and you just need silence. Your frequency to that song didn't match any longer. And the things that, that can control our frequencies are definitely our mindset. It's definitely like sleep, nutrition. You know, I do a free... I do a free course called Vitality, and it's all about our energy. It's not about exercising. It's not about vitality. Is the energy that we expel, and it's really important. And so when our energy is healthy and putting out healthy things, we get it back. When we put out joy- joyful things, we get more. When we put out worry, we're planning for bad, so we get bad. It's all what we are, you know, the, we're, we're planning when we're worrying, and we're planning when we're dreaming, and it's just what we're planning for. Right. Are we planning for the good stuff or the, or the, bad. the sky is falling chicken little yeah, stuff? Yeah, for sure. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about this idea of energy and frequency, because um, in some of the information you sent me, it it says that you are a natural energy three. Can we talk about that? Yes, it's super fascinating. So there are a few different schools of thought, but they all, um, and, and I mean, it's really amazing. We come in and we have chakras, which is our power, power centers, but there is this new through physics and quantum physics and science that are proving that each body comes in with a different soul type. So we come in with a power point in our body, and it does correlate a a bit with our chakra system, but not totally. And it says you are either, you know, one is, you know, you're very cranial and your soul type, you can go up and extract information from like the ethers and how you like when you're walking into a party and how you kind of feel into it. Some people feel very cranial. Those people are very tall. And, I mean, it's really a physical thing, but it's so cool. Those people are tall, and I believe they're a natural energy seven. And then it goes down, and so it comes down how you get your information and what you do with that. And a natural energy three is my power center is between my heart and my throat. Mm -hmm. And... I have the ability to connect to people's souls and take that information and it just emanates from me out into the universe. And that, because trust me, I fell upon the manifesting for people totally by accident. I had no idea that there was this. 
And I had no idea that that was my calling in the world. I thought I was a medium. I thought I was a psychic. And then my path started to really expand into that. And I, and I would, there was no turning back. I mean, it's, I, I couldn't imagine not doing this for people, but well, share so with us a bit of head. how that happened, you know, because I mean, well, first of all, I'm sorry, we're going to we're going to circle back because you said you were born clairvoyant. So I was born clairvoyant. Yep. And and so in with that kind of a statement, does that mean that there's some of us that can just develop uh, clairvoyancy without being or is everybody just born that way? Every single person. So here's here's this is the this is the deal we are all born with psychic ability we are all born with a gift of intuitive knowledge that is not any of our senses that we that we use and we either have clairvoyance which is clear seeing clear audience which is clear hearing or clear cognizance which is a huge strength of mind and that's clear knowing and when i was mm. a little girl i would just know things and things that I should not know. And I, I mean, things that were so far beyond on my education and people would say, how do you know that? And I didn't know how. So I, and because I do this for a living and because I work so hard on it, I have all of them. Like I, I can actually hear my spirit guide talking and I can hear things. And, and I developed that when I decided that I was told in my early 30s that I was going to be a medium and I didn't believe it because I had really worked hard to kind of shut down the clairvoyance it was really scary for me as a little girl yeah I can imagine and I found out very quickly that it was not acceptable for me Mm. to be that in my family so I just wasn't and I tell everybody we are all born with this ability to run but not all of us are Olympic athletes and so we are all born with the ability to have exactly what I have. But that's not our path here for everybody. And some people, like I work with a lot of people that are so intuitive and have these gifts, too, but they don't want to do it. But it sure makes them a better mom or it sure makes them better in their business. You know, I have like, um, I work with this board of the directors who's all men and I work honing their intuitive compass and their business has completely and utterly changed as a result. Wow. And that's, yeah. And, and so that's the thing is when it, it only serves as like a superpower or like the coolest tool in our toolbox. And some people go to school and some people, some people really like, want to do the education surrounding it and they it's something that they consciously don't feel like they have but they want to hone it and they become they do what I do and then there's people that are born with it and and it's not about your diet it's not about the postures you sit in during meditation it is not about anything it is about being open to communication of all sorts and being accepting like the the intuitive compass is you know, it's based on truth, joy, trusting, and love. And I always say our intuitive compass is the current of love. And it really, truly is. And we don't have to feel all pushy about love, but it's this safety that we're good and, we'll, and we listen to ourselves and we trust ourselves. I, you know, that's totally been my experience as well. And the more, um, personally, the more I've opened to uh, be vulnerable if you will, mm-hmm. it, you know, because that's mm-hmm. that that's a big uh, trigger word for many people. But being vulnerable for me now means being more open to love, and it's not the and it's not the uh, romantic love. It's a, it's a it's a it's love of humanity, love oh, of for sure of the universe, kind of love. And th- and I find that my intuitive becomes more clear when I'm in those states. Mm-hmm. As opposed to the other one of the, like you were talking about the, the cranial stuck in my head thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's that, yeah. And it's when we sit in the non-resistance of it. And it's, you know, really like what I tell people is the minute that we kind of say, okay, all, all we need to do really is acknowledge that we just need to acknowledge that signs really are, we are getting signs. We need to acknowledge that 
we do have an intuitive compass. And as we pay attention, and like I always tell people, as we pay attention and, and get intuitive hits, and they're subtle. They're not these big, booming voices coming out of the heavens. But as we say, okay, acknowledge it, and then act on it, we get more and more and more, you know. And it, people are amazed because their signs are everywhere. And, you know, like I, I got a slew of signs. You know, I get a slew of signs for business. Like every morning I ask. Show me the best way to move forward today for whatever purpose I'm working on in the day. You know, show me the best way to, you know, show me the best way to create more abundance in my life. And then I have to sit and receive the signs. And I can't tell you how many people I tell to do that. They do that, but then they kind of don't want to see the signs or they they overthink the signs. Mm -hmm. And there's you know, we, we, I think we tend to logically rationalize our intuition away. Oh, absolutely. You know, and that's such a shame because our lives are a bazillion times easier when we do not. So when you're asking on a daily basis, show me the way to move forward, are you then sitting in meditation or do you just get up and go about your day? Well, I do, I do two things. So I wake up every single day at four and I do a half, a 30 minutes of a, my, my spiritual practice meditation. Then I do 30 minutes of mantra meditation for manifesting. And then I do an extra hour for mindfulness. And so what I do is I face the sun at, or, and sometimes the sun's not up yet, but I set my intention for the day and I ask for heavenly guidance. And I really connect in with my spirit guides that I didn't even believe in spirit guides. But then, boy, when I was proven that, that I had them, I, I thought, gosh, you know, I'm not going to ignore this. I mean, it was, it was, it, it was blatant. And I kind of connect in and I say, just show me. And then in, in the two, so in the last hour of the two hours, I sit I'm very mindful. I do tons of gratitude work to get my vibration higher. And I really just feel into the day. And then, yes, I actually have three teenagers that I got to get out the door starting at, at 530 or 6 in the morning. Oh, my and gosh. And so I go into that. And But even in that is I'm really mindful. And my kids, you know, I mean, I've raised them very mindful of, us going into our days and that setting intentions makes for better days. And, um, you know, it, it's just really worked well. Like one time, this is a, this is like a really funny story. I was having a really hard time working out. I was kind of really blocked. This wasn't actually even oh, that long ago. It was probably about nine months ago. And I found myself literally, Susan, sitting on the couch. Like I was really in a blocked state. And I would sit on the couch and not go running, not go walking, not do anything. And so finally I asked, show me, like, I don't know what this is, but show me what I need to know to get up off this couch and get on my treadmill. And I got in my car that afternoon and I was driving to go pick up my daughter from eighth grade. And there is a sign at the at the very first stoplight I come to that has been there every single day, and I see it every single day. And it's one of those green signs that directs you to the hospital. Uh huh. You know, and but when I looked at it, and I I couldn't believe my eyes. Hospital was totally faded out, except for S I T. And so I. Like, it's, like, I even took a picture. I was just dumbfounded that I was getting a sign that was like, sit, and it, you know, you're not, you're going to end up in the hospital if you just are sedentary. Oh, my God. Night. I got chills as you're saying that now. And it was, I mean, I howled. I made, I mean, I went and got my eighth grader, and I went back around, and I showed her that sign, and I told her what I did because, but that's my life. I get that. That's the kind of communication when you really, as a person, commit to it and just accept it it's nothing 
scary. You know, people are always so afraid. We watch way too many scary movies. Oh, people yeah. People are terrified of because, like, Sixth Sense or whatever. But I'm telling you, like, it is magic. It's magic. And it's so much fun. Because, you know, I mean, that, well, that was a pretty serious, that was a pretty <laughs> serious sign. Yeah. And it didn't scare me. I just knew, okay, there what? There I go. I guess I'm on the treadmill. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So, so let's talk a little bit about this um, new project that you're launching. Okay. Um, It's called Abundant Life 360. And Mm -hmm. so I want you to share with everybody why you're doing it, what inspired you to do it. it. I mean, we've kind of talked about that, but what, what is the purpose of it? purpose of it, well, 360 is because normally when I have people come to me, they want to be rich, thin, or in love. And they want to manifest that. But when we, when we really think about our life and our dream life, we might see all of those things, but it's a full, whole life 360. And so for me, that was the most important thing, is that I don't want somebody, I don't want to just help people with an income bracket or I don't want to help people that have like one goal because our lives are not just one thing. And so we all, as you know, we are, we are in this age where we can go to conferences and conventions and summer camps for entrepreneurs, which is where we met. And we are so expanded and inspired about creating these wonderful lives. But then we sit, and we sit with that once we get home, and we kind of lose our inspiration, and we don't really follow through with that. And my biggest hope for this is that I'm only, it's only for 100 people, and then I'm taking them down. And that is because I want people to really live their best life forever. Like, I so know I'm here to give people the energy and the tools that they can live life like mine. Because I, it's, it's how, it's where we're moving into the world. And I feel like people take all of these abundance courses or read Mm -hmm. all of these books, but they don't have the wherewithal to do it themselves. And so I, I'm trying to, to get away from that island complex where we're all these little islands reading our books. And I want, my purpose for this is to create a container in for which we all dwell in and create it with each other. And where it's, you know, it comes down to these small groups of 20 that are really intimate and their relationships. It's not just an online community. There's not even a Facebook page. It's these base camps. And I really, really want to change the world and to change how we look at our life. And, you know, the saddest thing for me is when someone like I put out a video a while ago and the question was, what is your million bucks? And that's because when someone says, how are you? And you say, I feel like a million bucks. What is that? No, <laughs> I asked, and you know, I was getting texts all day going, um, I'm thinking that they have no idea. Right. And I want people to know because the minute you know, and you get clear and like one of them is a, one of the things I do is a private call with me to start. And to help you get clear, then you can achieve it. But if we're walking around and we're not even clear on our dream life, we can't manifest it. And, 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 and I don't care who you're sitting in front of, and I am pretty good at it. And I can't man- help you manifest it if you don't know what it is you want. Right. I, I want to tap on this a bit, Susan, because the, the, a couple of things. The one of the things that impressed me when when you and I first met and talked is that you do this work with people that are in business and yeah. and there is this new paradigm that's evolving that I'm witnessing of people in business want their life to be a full 360 they want everything in their life to be integrated and so that there's not uh, there's not a block of, okay, now I'm at work. Okay, now I'm with my family. Okay, now I'm exercising. But all of it mm-hmm. comes together. It and, and the key component is 
is this mindfulness, being mindful mm -hmm. and aware, like you just said, of, okay, what is it that I really dream of having or being? What is, and being very clear about it. Yeah, you know, one of my biggest goals is if I could have all of my clients, if I could have everybody actually in the world, not my clients, if I could have everybody just shut their eyes and feel, just feel the same as if it were, and not know, I guess I should say, I'd love them to close their eyes and not know the difference between a Saturday morning and a Monday morning. Wow. Wouldn't that be great? Like, oh my gosh. You know, and that's even on my creed. Like my, like I have a company creed and that's like one of the biggest creeds for me is because when we real like, like my company, so I do life driven workplace and not a work driven life. And that is because we have gone like almost like a backlash where, you know, in the eighties and nineties, we spent so much time at work and we, you know, it, you were glorified if you were a workaholic mm -hmm. or, you know, people would say, how are you? And the answer, the go-to answer was busy. Oh my gosh, I'm so busy. And even as women that stayed home with kids, you never hear I'm good or I'm happy or, you know, you don't hear of the heart, you hear of the schedule. Right. The list and of to do. The list. And so for me, with people, like, I, I, I mean, Susan, I have, to, I have to tell you, I was shocked when I started getting brought into these businesses <laughs> because, and, you know, there's all these now conferences and conventions of, with LinkedIn and Google where they really are trying to be mindful of that. And I always, when I go in with some of my corporate clients, it's not about, you know, and they're talking about being green or they're talking about being a conscious company. Well, it's not about recycling. Right. It's not about, it's about really seeing what it is you're creating and the, who the people are and, and, and going into that. And they are vastly successful. What we need to realize is every single company is made up of humans. And those humans are made up of some awesome thoughts. But some of those humans have limiting beliefs. And these are like CEOs down to the, you know, the person that just got hired that is absolutely entry level. And we share that common soul with just different attributes. And so that has become such a vital mission for me is to really change the culture of corporate America. Because when, when I did, when I was younger and did have my intuition shut down and wasn't going to go that route, I worked in corporate America and there has never been a place I belonged least. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I just, it, it, you know, and so to go back now and to be able to see the shift. I mean, I tell people all the time, we are in the intuitive, we have shifted into the intuitive age. We are so, we are making our phones more intuitive. We're making our light and our security systems in our home so intuitive that we can do it from wherever we are, that we can turn it on. Our cars are intuitive. They don't even need a key any longer. But we are not anchoring that in to who we are as humans a little but not you know so that's kind of my mission is that and, and I've seen it over and it's no longer just for women no no it's for men at too at all no and they men are wildly successful at being intuitive they just it's talk about a um, stigma it's always you know been the gift of women and Boy, let me tell you, I work with about 85, my corporate clients are at least 85% men, and they are amazingly intuitive. Isn't that exciting to witness? Oh, I love it. Oh, my gosh. It's, it, it makes me so happy. And they get so, I will get texts for phone calls all the time with their latest intuitive hit. That was right. Like, they, like... They're hysterical. They love it. They absolutely love it. So, Susan, let's go back to Abundant Life 360. Yes. And and so you so you're inviting people to come, and you're going to have a hundred people. So, but this is going to be a year long program, right? It's a year long immersion program. So what it is is it is a program where actually we will have. I, I, set, I look at everybody's applications, and then I put you intuitively, what makes sense logically, into small groups of 20. And then I am in that group along with you every day. 
And I have some mentors that are going to be in the group because as I have told people about this, the people who I'm going to be putting out videos of interviews of people that have achieved, uh, have achieved their million bucks and what that was for them and how they got it to help because we need to hear those stories. But I've even had some of them say, can I do that? Like, oh, yeah. can I, because, you know, the biggest way to cut ourselves off is to think you know everything and to not keep educating yourself. And then what it is, is it's me constantly like doing videos and talking you through it. But it's also me giving people like when they're stuck, it's like, okay, here's how this is going to work. This is what I want you to do. It is absolutely so intensive. And for me too, like I am there going, okay, then let's try this today. And let you know, and I want, I want to hear the struggles as I want, as much as I want to hear, you know, Hey, I manifested, you know, $2,000 today. Somebody, I got off the phone with this gentleman that I did a call on Friday and I said, don't worry, it's going to come to you. Here's what you need to do. Here's the mantra. That afternoon I got a call and he said, I just left my mailbox and there is a check. I don't even know for $2,000. And so it's things like that. It's like, getting me to kind of help via not just like an an email blast or not just a Facebook group. This is absolutely your own portal. And it's every, every mentor I've ever had, every video I've ever watched, that's all going into this portal. So it's just, I mean, it's downloads of information that will help because, you know, Everybody, there is the mental person, there is the emotional person, there is a spiritual person, and there is the person that's so physical that the rest might be a little uncomfortable. So my job is to be your structure to hold all four. And it, you know, I just, it, it, it became really important to me in the last few months is that I, I really had to give, I, I really have to let people know that they can live life like me. Like, Susan, you know, I manifested utter poverty like 10 years ago. And so I'm not just somebody that manifested, you know, paying off their credit cards. I'm not somebody that just has read a bunch of books and teaches this. I actually manifested utter poverty and then manifested the life of wealth that I have now out of nothing. And some of it was that I got off my Fanny and showed up in the world physically to do everything. Others was that I had to really mentally work on my self-talk and what I was saying and what I was telling myself and telling others and playing the victim. Mm -hmm. And the other, though, was I had to expect utter miracles. And that is the thing that really trips people up. They just don't believe it'll happen. And I have seen that portion happen over and over and over again with me and other people. Yeah, I think and that I just the, need to give it back. I appreciate that because that's the balancing act. Yeah. Oh, it, and it is for sure. And you know, I I feel like there are people that really, I think they love the secret, and I think mm. they love mm. all these books. But I think that they really, truly don't, on some core level, believe it. And so I feel like my job is to absolutely prove it to them. And. And I've had people that have been really, truly on the brink of bankruptcy, being so, losing their marriage, losing their home. I mean, the same person had it all coming at them. And and I gave him one exercise. And by the end of the week, he had manifested like over $100,000. Wow. And, I, and, and it's just like I switched his, I kind of flipped his switch. To start paying attention to what was coming in instead of that story of oh my gosh i'm losing everything i'm losing i'm losing right which if is we can anchor yeah which you're going to lose more yep because you keep focusing on it yeah it's our words like i tell people out of the bat you have to we have to be impeccable and when we say i need like i want everybody that's listening to your radio show to immediately stop get it out get it out on every level of your vocabulary that word need because it immediately puts your vibration to lack Mm, mm -hmm. because we need water air shelter and food that is all we need everything else we want and want is such a powerful word and and we are and 
not even women, but as women, we are not we are not taught to want things. No, you know, and depending on who our parents were, some some people are taught it's rude to want. Well, but that's the truth of it is that we do, and we also when we say what we want, we have this amazing thing happen where we say what we don't want. So I immediately, when people work with me, they can no longer say need. And I really try to get them away from can't. Because when you sit in can't, you're a victim. And because you can do anything, you just are choosing not to. Right. You know, um, but when we sit in need, we're saying we don't have it. I need that dress. You're saying there's something within you that is lacking because you don't have that dress. And that's not the truth. You love that dress. You love that Maserati. You don't need the Maserati. <laughs> I, I so agree with you, and you're, and as you're saying all this, I'm I'm thinking in my mind. Okay, so where am I needing? Where where have I been yeah, needing? You'll you know, see, you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> now. I'm telling you, you're gonna go out for a swim and go. Oh my gosh, you're gonna be stunned. Do you know that eighty six over eighty six percent of our decisions and our choices we make every day are subconscious? Oh yeah, I believe it. And so we don't even. We don't know our vocabulary. Because when I started down this, like, I had yellow stickies everywhere. Like, mm-hmm. I lived, I actually lived in Southern California at the time. Now I live in Northern. And my house was, like, yellow stickies everywhere. And it was so funny because, and I, and I needed them. I needed them because I was in a really bad mindset and a really seriously bad heart set. And so through my language and through my belief system, I altered it. I knew I had to change a couple things, and I did. And my life just totally turned around. And I mean, at warp speed. You know, and it's true what you said earlier of um, what you resist persists. And so then what you put your attention on is where where the focus goes, and then you can fast forward your life. Oh, my gosh. Like, like unbelievably, and in the, and in the wildest of ways. And you know, the other thing I always tell people is we are so attached to our outcome. Like, it, if it's not going to be our way, we don't, like, you know, when people say, oh, it just, I didn't manifest it. We we can't get really nailed down to the details. Because oh, yeah. if you're asking for $100,000, but you're imagining it has to come through work, that you don't, you are discounting. 90% of the rest of the ways it can come. So that's what I teach people is that, look, you have to believe in this magic because what I see happen is when people least expect it, they get, they get checks or they get, or whatever it is, you know, whatever they're trying to manifest. They don't want it to be solely about money, but money's the hot spot. And that is, here's the thing. When I first moved to Northern California and I was really anchored into my psychic ability, but I knew I was not in a position to hang the shingle right away. And I kept seeing me standing on a set of stairs with a pie. And I did I did not have a way to pay rent. I did not have a way to keep my lights on. I did not have a way to raise my three children. And this was that was only like six years ago. And I kept seeing me standing there with a pie. And then clear audiently I heard make a cake. And so I had I been stuck to my outcome, I would have blown that off and tried to go teach meditation, and I would have never have done what I did. But instead, I knew that I was from this great family of Texan women that could cook like nobody's business, and I started to bake cakes, and then I took samples around all the restaurants. And by the end of the week, I had five commercial accounts. And I, I did not know how I was going to pay rent. I mean, literally... And I had manifested a check for $5,000. I had traded in um, this old Cadillac of my dad's to get the car that I had to even get us to Northern California. And I got a check sent to me, not forwarded to me, but somehow the woman who owned the dealership got my new address. Wow. And she sent me a check for $5,000 because my dad's car sold for so much more and she knew the position I was in, and I didn't know how I was going to 
take care of my family. And that was more than enough at that time to do so that month. Wow. And then all of a sudden I had all of these restaurant clients. And I did that for like two years and raised the money, hung my shingle as a medium, and I've been doing that now here. I did that in San Diego. I did that in Southern California, but I just wasn't in the position to do it moving so far away from home. So let me ask you this, Susan, because sometimes, so uh, today I was investigating within myself because uh, I have a, uh, I have a house for sale mm-hmm. in Ojai and it's not selling. It's been on the market, right? So, uh, so I was investigating what is it that I'm holding on to? What am I blocking? What's the belief system? What's the, you know, and, oh, and what, uh, is coming to me is that because I think this is this is just my example, but I think this is true in other areas that there it's not just my desire for the house to sell. There's other people involved, like the realtor, my ex husband, my mm-hmm. son, and everybody's got an energetic piece of it Everybody. that needs it to be a certain way. I mean, use that word need, right? Needs it to right. be a certain way, and so so. So in manifesting, it's not just us getting clear on our want and then staying focused on it. There's also these other uh, energetics coming from other people that play in and possibly delay or cause it to happen faster. Is is that is that true? No. Well, no. Is that, so I guess you could look at it that way. Here's how I look at it. Nobody can manifest. For, you cannot manifest for other people. They cannot manifest for you. Okay. That's like you and can't make somebody happy. You no, you have you to be happy she, and then meet somebody who's happy too. Right. But like, so you holding the energy that they're all kind of holding it up is holding it up. Mm-hmm. Because that's still holding it up. Like, and, and here's the <laughs> deal. Like I always tell people when their house isn't selling, you clear that house. You get sage. You do all of that. But you also... It's like turning your back on hard. If it's not selling, you just kind of turn your back on it. Just don't think about it. Like think, okay, it will, or think, get bored. Like when we get bored and we change that energy from, why isn't it selling, to I don't even care today, I'm just bored, it, it softens the current right. of intentions around that house. And so, and here's the thing, it's also absolute divine timing. That universal law is so real and what that says is when the universe is ready when you are ready to move on to your next thing and and subconsciously remember like our subconscious holds so much of our power the universe will let it go and there there could be i remember one time i couldn't sell my house and at the time i was married and i had three kids and i was i was up here all alone and he was in San Diego, and I remember this woman said to me, I swear she was an angel, and I mean, I was sobbing because I was raising three kids all by myself, and they all were babies, and I said to her, our house is not selling, and she looked at me, and she said, that is because your house in San Diego isn't ready, and it just floored me because my belief system knew that, yet I was so in the trenches with babies and a mortgage and moving that I just had pulled away from that. And do you know the minute that the house in San Diego, I mean, gorgeous dream home in San Diego came on the market, our house sold in one day. Wow. So it's divine timing. It's just there, you know, it's like when people say, oh, my prayers don't get answered. They do. It's just not on your timeline. It's right. when you need them to. Right. So, Susan, we have a couple more minutes left mm-hmm. for our conversation. So the program that you're launching, when does it launch? So at, at applications we're, are launching on Monday. The, I believe it's the 17th. They are able to go on, fill out an application Applications close on the 15th of December, and I will be going over phone calls to to the participants, and all the pre-work is going to start January 11th, any, anywhere between January 1st and January 11th, and our first live call, because I'm going to do one live phone call every month where people are going to get to talk to me and strategize. So our phone calls together in that first is on February 1st. And 
I'm just so excited because I just want to help people take it to the a, a next level. And and there are so many people out there that know this magic exists and that have seen little bits and pieces. They just need somebody to help them along the way. And this is perfect. So um, so the website is AbundantLife360.com. Yep. And, and that is up and running now. That is up and running now. Okay. So that's where everybody can go and investigate exactly what the immersion, the year-long immersion program is. Uh -huh. yes. And then uh, and go on Monday go and put in an application. Yes. Okay. So, and, and if they get to the website, have them click on apply now. Okay. Because if, it, if, if it's applying now, we're trying to really hold it off until um, I really wanted it energetically. A lot of what I am doing here is based on numerology and is based on energy. And so I thought Monday, the perfect day to just go on and apply. Take so, the weekend. It's the Monday before Thanksgiving. It's great. So Susan, I've, I've been talking to Susan Lustenberger, and Susan's website is SusanLustenberger.com, and it's L-U-S-T-E-N-B-E-R-G-E-R. -E -E and the program is called Abundant Life 360. Susan, thanks so much for this conversation. I don't know. I loved it. I had fun, so. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. So no, I'm just, I just thank you. You're welcome. I'm just going to end with, and so it is, namaste.